Hi guys, welcome to Crank Up the Leadership. I'm Sam. I'm Jeremiah. And I'm Dan. And woo! My dad, woo y'all. <laughs> The Brooke man. is also here with us, hanging in the audience. Uh, she's in the background running all the stuff. Hi, Brooke. Uh, so we're back for another episode of Crank Up the Leadership. And today we have, of course, my dad with us here to share some really awesome, epic, blue-collar leadership for the white collar world that many of us here on LinkedIn live in. So, uh, just, you know, some regular housekeeping stuff. We are streaming live on LinkedIn, Jeremiah's Facebook and our YouTube channel, just in case LinkedIn gets glitchy. You guys know how it gets sometimes hop over to YouTube. Brooke, can you, uh, pop up that little banner thingy on the bottom so that people can know our YouTube. Um, and that's it. Jay, you want to kick us off with an intro? I'm, you know what? I'm just excited right now. How I know. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm like trying I'm like, to. So, so one of the greatest Ooh. things about having Dan on here is that on my, my LinkedIn journey and I was kicked this off, I ran into Sam. Sam was over hyping us all up and she started, she, and I don't know who you talked to, Sam. It was, was it, was Logan. it Logan who gave you the idea? It was Logan, right? Gave you the idea to start doing, you know, lessons from dad. And that really got us all like, connected because I love your lessons. And I was like, this is brilliant. How did Sam take these awesome moments in her life and then put them into these leadership tactics? Right. And then we started talking and here we are cranked up to leadership, right? Like later on. And so right now I'm like extremely excited, um, to be here. I'm like a little kid in the candy shop and I'm like, Oh, and I'm, my name is Jeremiah Hammond, by the way. And I'm here. I'm ready to rock. I'm excited. Let's do this. I'm super excited. Um, my name is Sam. Guys, obviously, you guys all know me. I'm a former teen mom, current uh, leader, badass woman, uh, just wanting to show everybody that your past doesn't define you and that you can do whatever you want to do with your life as long as you just take charge of it and leave your life for yourself. Uh, Dad, Dan, want to give us an, intro an introduction? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm Dan. I'm uh, Samantha Pops, and uh, I, I work in construction. And I, you know, this is going to be very interesting for me to uh, be able to engage with the white collar world. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. We have got so many people in the house. I I had to throw out the um, the overlay so that people's comments will start trickling in, but, uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of people in the house That's already. So super pumped. Ken, what's up, Ken? We got Ken Denner. <laughs> Savor the flavor of this magical moment. Ken, we're here and we love you and thank you for showing up. That's awesome. Look, Adam is, Adam is not only hanging with us on LinkedIn, but he's also hanging with us on YouTube. High five, Adam. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jasmine, that's that's legit my dad. Like, for real, for real. <laughs> he the man. Is the the yes. How you doing, Adam? I enjoyed you guys uh, when you guys uh, did the show with you. When, when they did the show with you, I, I watched that. It was very entertaining and very informative. <gasps> I'm excited too, Beth. <laughs> Beth, we got Beth. We've got John. We've got Kristen. What's up, the crew? Everybody, everybody is here. Everybody's showing love for dad. I'm loving it. Thank you guys all for coming here for dad. All right. Let's so get let's get it going. Let's do it. So obviously my dad's a construction worker. Uh, growing up, he always taught me lessons that were related to really everything. And a lot of those lessons came from the construction world. One of the biggest things, needing your toolbox, right? The toolbox is where you house everything. That's your, <laughs> there, there will not be a musical performance. Yes, there will. <laughs> I'm just a poor man, nobody loves me. Don't get me started. That is, that is our song. <laughs> we get to, 
dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. Every time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so your your toolbox, that's where you house everything, right? That's where you house your power skills, your your soft skills, everything that you need. Yep. Hammer, screwdriver, saw, wrench, ratchet. But then you also have all of your power tools in there also you have your drill you have your nail gun you have all the accessories that you need your batteries you got to remember to keep charge all those things go into your toolbox what is a leader without the tools what is a team without the tools now jay you have a lot of tools and and you work a lot uh with tools in your program that you've developed for project for the project management pathway. Correct. So like the power tools, when I, when we talk about power skills or power tools, it's like, these are, these are the skills, abilities that you show up with every day to be able to lead your, yourself effectively and then your team effectively. And I, and I was just, I was just doing this event. I was talking to them about it and they're like, well, what, what are power skills essentially? And I said, this is where the combination of your hard skills and your soft skills come together right? It's like the integration of them. It's everything that makes up who you are. And then how do you utilize that in your, in the world? And so that's the toolbox that we have naturally that we have to, that we have to cultivate and we have to leave open and make sure that we're, that we're using the right tool at the right time, Dan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and it's not just about, you know, the tool themselves, you know, it's about how you treat your tools because like uh at least on the on the construction side if you leave them laying around in the dirt or somewhere where they're going to get wet or you know they can get damaged but and you know another thing is keeping your tools sharp you know they're they're important you know when you try mm -hmm. to i'd rather have a rinky dink saw with a sharp blade than to have this high-tech beautiful saw with a dull blade you know your, your, your tools are so important and if you take care of them and, and you learn how to use them and how to treat them and you know to, to make sure that they're always there available for you that's important yeah that goes back to the if you you know if you have you know six hours to chop down a tree you spend five hours sharpening the saw right absolutely absolutely and and another really cool thing you said there was that this is cool um you have, <laughs> right you have to take care of them and so even in, in, in what, you know, leadership roles, who are we, if we don't take care of ourselves as leaders, right? Like we go in there, if we don't take care of ourselves and get that right sleep, get the right nutrition, know, know when things are going to challenge our tools, right? They're going to challenge these things about us. That's, that's such an important, I mean, I love how that's like, that's such an important concept. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Take Dad, that's like a pro at like macgyvering just about anything like he i've seen him use tools in un, unintended purposes to get the job done oh yeah and that's innovation right it is. It is. just because you have just because you have a tool that says okay this is used for this and you can do all these things with it dad's the type to be like Oh, well, hey, I need this done. And you know what? This looks like it'll work. And you just well, figure it out. That, that, comes, that comes with knowing your tools and how they're used. Mm. You know, like uh, if you got a hammer, you want to bang in some nails, that's pretty obvious. But if you don't have a hammer with you at the moment and you're trying to bang in a nail, you, I mean, you can use a... Uh, channel locks or something you just have to be really precise on how to swing <laughs> you it. do you and, got and throughout the years i've i've developed small little techniques to help me use different tools for jobs that they're not intended for but you know sometimes you, you need the crutch and and it's nice to know <laughs> that hey you know instead of me waiting 15 minutes for somebody to go down the ladder and go get something else. I can just use this. It's interesting yeah. in, in leadership. We sometimes tell people you can't always be a hammer looking for a nail, 
right. right? You can't always be somebody just running around. And sometimes you have to be like a velvet hammer, right? You have to be able to soften it. It, it just depends on the, the situation. You know, if you're working with a really precise, like a nice, you know, if we have a nice, you know, aesthetic wall and we want to make, we have to get some, we, you know, like uh, we have to hammer it. We want to make sure that we're using something that's not going to leave big dings and we have to be really precision with our tools. Right. So it's like, it's like, you got to be creative at all times, but at the same time, you can't always be blunt force trauma. Yeah, no, that's, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. And and it's the same way with the finesse too. You know, if, if you don't, you don't want to be too finesseful, or if that's even a word, you know, it's just. Now you guys know how, know why I make up so many words. <laughs> Having the right tool for the right to do, to get the job done is, is extremely important. You know, mm -hmm. so you really don't want to rely upon, uh, you know, the crutch, but it's yep. nice to have it if you need it, you know, a secondary, some kind of backup, contingency plan, whatever you want to call it. But Absolutely. Right tool for the right job is, is extremely important. I'm sure it works the same way up in the, uh, in the upper level of the management as well. Yeah, you have to use like when you're talking about, you know, leadership styles and stuff, you know, when you go into a room with people, sometimes you have to be like the the commander, right? You have to go in and be like, I got to go into this room and I've got to get the result. So I'm going to run it down with everything I have. And that's a tool, right? It's a different mentality, a different mindset. You're using like a pace setter leadership. And other times you have to go in and say, yeah, you kind of understand the team's not feeling very well. So you walk in there and you can sense it. So you have to be like, I'm not going to be super hard on them. I don't need to for one at the same time. We got to mellow it down really quick and understand and appreciate where people are coming from so we can really get really productive and get stuff done. So we're, I'm constantly in my world, like balancing all these different like mental games, mental agility to get things done. Cause you work with people and they're all, you know, we're all like full of emotions, right? We run around full of emotions. And we got to make sure that we're using the right tool for the right emotion to make sure you don't trigger certain things and, you know, adapt oh, to other okay. things. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that like emotional intelligence in and of itself is a tool, right? Oh, yeah. Understanding Absolutely. how to recognize those things. Mm -hmm. It's going into a room and saying, okay, this, this environment feels tense. I don't no. need to come in like a wrecking ball yeah. and add more tension. Cyrus. We, we call it on a job site, we call it getting the itchies. When, when, when you're trying to do something that's, simple that should only take you five ten minutes but a screw snaps off or strips out or uh -huh. or, or you drop your tool or, or it's in such a place that you really can't reach it and and you just get frustrated and you'll just mm -hmm. like just like oh my god and we call it the itchies because at least i do it and aaron does it we don't know about everybody in the world but when i get <laughs> aggravated the first thing i do is i start scratching the back of my head i don't know why it's, it's I, uh, you, you do it don't you <laughs> I love that. Yeah, because I will like I'll be sitting there and it's like something happens. I'm like, oh you get, you get, the you get hot, yeah. you get the itchies, and it's like, uh. So yeah. if I notice that Aaron's like that, or if he notices that I'm like that, he'll ask me, he'll be like, Hey, is everything all right? What's going on? And I'll be like, Oh, uh, yeah, I'm on campus having a trouble. It it might not be job related. It it might be, you know, related in a relationship or, or at home or or whatever the case may be, something that's stressing somebody out. Mm -hmm. for whatever reason it is and you just have to you know either talk them down talk them through it yep. or just get them to change the channel in their brain and i'm pretty good at that because i get super silly on the job and <laughs> i always make people laugh i try to get, i try to keep the the mood live you know everybody happy if i go in and i'm you know because I, I am the i'm the job site foreman and if I go in and I'm all, hey, we got to get this done and bang, 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 and the fist on the table and all of that, it doesn't work. Mm. People know? don't react. I, I, all I do is aggravate people and I don't want to, this, this is going to be a long day. No, I want the day to go by fast also. So Because people are feeling uh, good, right? And energized. Yeah. And time is money for us, right? When we're, we're on their boots on the ground, we have to come in and get a job done. We have to execute it. And if we need our best people doing the best work they're going to do, we have to make sure they're in the best frame of mind. And we also need to know when they're not, because if they're not in the best frame of mind and we make it worse, we're going to get less productive, more mistakes. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I work. It gets, it, it, it'll snowball real fast. I, I, I spent a lot of time, Dan, you know, in construction growing up, 
I, I mean, that's what I did. Boots on the ground. You know, I've done concrete. I've done fencing. I've done house building. I've done everything. I come from a long line of family members and we, we had horses and ranches. And literally the worst thing you could ever do is come in there and get all, get everybody all heated, you know, cause you were working out in the heat of the day, all kinds of stuff. Right. And it's like you get everybody all upset. And if you don't know how to really regulate that and know your people, oh boy, you want to talk about a down. Like, I mean, we you lose not only do you potentially lose your coworkers and these workers that are working with you, which costs us money, we also lose a lot of time in product because people do some crazy stuff when they're mad. And in the oh, in absolutely. our world, I've seen some amazing things. Yep. I've been pulled down off of a tractor before. And, and got thrown in a pile of mud and, and did a mud wrestling contest because I, I aggravated a person and they jumped up there and pulled me off, threw me down and it was on like, <laughs> like, like out of nowhere. I'm like, what is happening right now? It was like, so, I mean, I've been through some, some amazing things from that. And what it does, and what it does also is it, it'll give you a reputation for, you know, Oh, mm -hmm. here comes Danny. He's, he's, he's the, uh, He's head. the grump of the, of the job site. I don't. I don't want that. I want people to look at me and wanna and wanna gravitate toward me. I want them to wanna talk to me and have fun and 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 enjoy the job. You know, we're all there mm -hmm. together. We're all working together. You know, for a common goal. And if you start, you know, putting resistance out there, you're gonna get resistance back. Think of how That's powerful it is. People are not gonna want to be around you and. And that's how you lose good people. You know, sometimes you got good people that don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. think, think how powerful that is, Dan, when you walk up and your team loves you, they like, they'll do anything for you. And mm -hmm. you do have that when you do it, like, you're like, Hey, we got to put in a 12 hour shift today, right? We got to put in a 14 hours. We got to get this job done. And because you show them respect, they will step up. Yep. Absolutely. Right. They will do whatever. And as long as you, you know, you know how to tailor that a little bit, not you're not all in throttle and say, I need you now or I don't need you or give them time off sometimes. Well, hey, we're going to cut. We rocked. We're going to cut it early. People love that. And if you're opposite of that, you don't get that from people. You don't get their best. Mm -mm. Yep. No. Especially when you need it most. You don't get their best when you need it most. Mm. Yeah, it, that's no. so true. Yep. That's so true. Um, I'm in that I'm in that position right now at work. Now, I got one guy on vacation. I got the bosses pushing to get this job done at the end of the week. The guy that I do have working with me has one speed. It's very slow. <laughs> but you know, like I say, you know, if you know your people, I know what he's capable of. I'm not going to give him anything that's going to that's going to eat him up for the whole day. I'll, I'll give him the little things. I'll have to take on the hard things. You know, sometimes you got to pull the rope a little harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that and uh, I I switched this over to choosing the right tool. It's knowing, you know, in the on the construction side, it's knowing what tools you need to use, right? Mm -hmm when to pull out that drill versus, you know, your, your screwdriver, when to pull out that nail gun versus your hammer. Mm -hmm. But it's also about knowing your people because your people are just as important as your, as your physical tools. Your people are the ones who you can say, okay, this, this is what needs to get done today. I'm going to use you to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is where leadership kind of, you know, oftentimes forgets that people are tools yeah. as well as people, you know, you can look at them and know, you know, I, I can use you to do this. I know you're really skilled at, at doing this. I also know you're not so great at doing this. So I'm not going to have you work on this at the moment, because we have to get this job done. We need to get this project project completed. I'll eventually show you how to do this. But for right now, I'm going to keep you in your lane. I'm going to keep you doing what you're, what you're used to doing, what you're, what you excel at. And when we as leaders can take that and understand that our, our team and the tools that they have, because we bring our own tools, right? We have time management and we have leadership and we have all of our soft skills. We have empathy and communication and confidence and compassion, all these things as leaders that we have in our back pocket. 
our teammates have their own set of unique skills. Some of them are really good at numbers. Some of them are really good at analysis. Some of them are really good at, at welding and manufacturing and doing all of these things. I'm not going to go over there. I'm not, I'm, I'm terrible at numbers. Sorry, Kristen, don't hate me. Um, but I'm, I'm just not a numbers person. <laughs> like you're not going to catch me behind the desk doing accounting stuff. Will I do it if I need to? Absolutely. But in a crunch time situation, don't put me on that desk. Yeah, don't put, yeah. Like that. And that's that where no leaders, problem. that's where leaders need to step up a little bit more because like you said, when it's when it's game time, when it's time to make those decisions to make sure that that project is completed on time, sometimes the leader has to step up. Sometimes they have to be the power tool. Lead by example. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then I I added this one. Keep your toolbox unlocked so that everyone has access to your tools. Leaders should not gatekeep secrets nope not at all nobody nobody wins nope. that way nope you gotta you gotta that's and that goes back to mentoring when we talk about social intelligence we talk everybody talks a lot about emotional intelligence yeah social intelligence is just is is you have to understand yourself and sam and i talked a lot about this in the past you got to understand yourself before you can inspire and understand and inspire others right you got to be inspired and that's where the social intelligence comes from and and sam just to really you know piggyback off what you just said you have to know through coaching and mentoring one-on-ones, mm -hmm. -on the model of the world of your people. And it doesn't have to be, it's not like you need a whole checklist of all these things. You just have to have a little bit of empathy, understand where they're at and put the right person on the right seat on the bus. And we've heard that terminology, but, and, and Dan, you know this, if you need something done and the, you send the slowest person to get it done fast and you know, they're slowest, you're setting yourself up and your team up for failure. Absolutely. Right there. And it's like, sometimes it's not about like, well, all I've got is this person available. Go do it. That's where you said we have to step up. We're not stepping down as leaders. We're stepping up and yeah. we have to go and we have to get it. Even if we take a different role, like step down and I have to be the project manager today or I'm the project coordinator. We lead, manage and follow at some point. Sometimes I got to follow. Sometimes I got to get it done. And that's such an important concept to make sure that everybody understands social intelligence, understanding, coaching and mentoring at the simplest level is how we actually get stuff done and innovate. Absolutely. Absolutely. As leaders. And you know what, Jay, you said something. Um, you know, you don't send the slowest person to do the job fastest, right? Because you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. Extreme ownership. Yep. If that person fails, that's, you fail. Everybody fails. Yep. 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 Yeah, that's that's my fault. fault. I shouldn't have sent that guy. Yeah. That's my fault. You need to know your people, people. Know your people, people. Know your people, people. People, people. <laughs> <laughs> you do. And, and it's interesting because you, you, you have to. And then the way you do that, and this is so cool. You said you have to keep your toolbox. You know, um, what did you, how did you put that, Sam? You have to keep your toolbox open. Open. Right. Yeah. And that's how you know your people is by coming with, without the pre, the presuppositions, right. Or predetermined, like, how's this going to happen? You leave yourself open to fully understand your people. You can then lead, you can then lead and understand and put them in the right position. You have to leave yourself open. They want to know, you know, the people that, that are looking for the leadership or, or looking for guidance, they mm -hmm. want to know that that they're not going to get in trouble for asking. Mm. Oh, that's huge. You know, that's huge. they don't, they that's don't, huge. they, they want to know that, uh, that the tools that they don't know about might be there, you know? So, you know, mm -hmm. if, if somebody comes to me and says, Hey, Dan, I'm trying to pull this siding off the wall and I can't get it unlocked. I can't get it unlocked. Hey, you know what? Go on to my, in my toolbox on the right hand side, blah, blah, blah. There's a little siding zipper. Cool. It was like, what's that? You know, it's not one that I bought because they're like twenty, thirty dollars in the store. I made this thing out of a scrap piece of metal, and it works better than the one I bought in the store a few years ago. <laughs> and you know, I always tell people, "There's my box. Anything you need, go. If you don't understand what it does, come to me. I'll explain it to you, and then go. Just you know, I, I, I want them to." To be able to thrive and be able to do the job when you're delegating to somebody, if 
if you don't give them the tools that they need, they're not going to get the job done. Absolutely. Powerful. That brings us to the shuns. Oh. <laughs> Strong to run. <laughs> that like okay so what what were we we were driving somewhere and it was just me and my dad and we're talking about leadership like because we always end up talking about leadership at some point and we started talking about breaking things down and building things up and we're like that's destruction right stripping every right i messaged you because i was like i, I need to tell jay and you were like i was like oh my god this is phenomenal <laughs> I'm sorry I'm like wacky inflatable, but I'm really excited. I remember this. This is beautiful. This is, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Calm down. So destruction, right? Stripping everything back so that you can get down to the bare basics, back down to the foundation. Right. Right. And then I was like, and then construction is, you know, using everything that you need to be able to build it back up. And then dad was like, and then you have instruction, which is, you know, showing people how it's done, how to, again, you know, instructing your people, leading them how to do it. And the whole, I think like just leadership and as a whole is all about the shuns, right? All about the shuns. <laughs> because now we have delegation. Not so delegation. delegation, trusting others to do what you can do. Absolutely. As a leader, you don't have to take everything on yourself. You need to make sure that the other people have the tools to be able to do what they need to get done. It's your job to make sure it gets done. Now your job to do it. Well, like that show that you did with Adam, um, mm -hmm. when you guys were talking about uh, training, you know, and you, you, I know you go you go through the process of, of getting applications and everything and. And that's the whole thing. So you get 10 applications and you look through the application and you're like, all right, these three are really good. Let's, let's, let's interview these three. All right. And it's like, uh, you know, this one right here, the one out of the three, this is the one who seems to know the most. So you get them in and then you put them in, in their position and you're like, okay, here's the tools. Here's the headache that comes with it. Have fun. Don't call me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if 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 that's so a lot of people will do that. A lot of people are like, you say you know how to do this. Here's the tools, go do it. Yeah. You know, not everybody does everything the same way. Not everybody fries chicken the same way. Not everybody cooks ZD the same way. You you gotta you know, not everybody nails, swings a hammer or, or cuts saws or whatever. So you have to find a way to kind of blend what they know, what, what they're comfortable with, with what you're looking for them to do. Mm -hmm. And then you have to learn about them and see what they're capable of. But, you know. that, that boils down to another shun that's not on here. It's really cool. There's two shuns I got, I got here. One of them would be communication mm. and then motivation. Oh, right. motivation. When you give your instruction, okay. you have to be able to communicate in, in a way that resonates with people, yep. right? And you're handing responsibility to them. And as leaders, mm -hmm. it's our job to say, we are now delegating, right? Delegation. Mm -hmm. And we're, and we're going to delegate this to you. And we need to give you the instructions and, and communicate in a way that we can actually get the result. And that goes back to the right person. So we have to say, I'm handing this to you. Do you get it? You understand? Can you now take this instruction and get that end result? And it's our job as leaders to hand that responsibility over. And once it's handed over, it's our responsibility to follow back up to make sure it was heard and understood and that we're on track to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really that I like that in between the instruction, like the destruction, breaking it down, instruction, yeah. then you got the motivation, you have to really get people pumped to do it. Yeah. And then inspiration also, right? You have to fill others mm. with faith in yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. and because that's, that's often, oftentimes we, <clears throat> oftentimes we think that people have all the tools. They come in, they know what they're supposed to do. They got to get it done. Sometimes people don't feel like they're capable of doing something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't feel like they meet expectations, 
right? So you have to inspire them, make them feel like they're exceeding those expectations or meeting yep. those expectations. Because when you, when you inspire people, when you give them the confidence to do what they need to do, mm -hmm. they will soar. They'll do it. They'll, yep, soar. they'll do it. It's motivation right there. Absolutely. It gives them motivation because they believe in themselves because you believed in them. Earlier, Absolutely. somebody had wrote something. I'm trying to find out where it was. Somebody had put uh, somebody had put contribution. Mm. You know, if, yeah. if you make people feel like they're contributing, then they feel like they're important. If, if, if somebody's not feeling important, you know, like me at work, I'm, I'm the lead guy. I know I'm important, but there are days when I come in. Yes. And my guys are already doing things that I that they know had to be done. So I'm like, well, you know, it, it's a nice feeling on one hand because I, I can feel like, oh, I get to relax. I can do something a little more easier. But then I'm like, oh, shit, well, they don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> We've, all, We've all felt I that. I want, feel I want to feel like I'm yeah. a part of it, even though yeah. right now I'm, I'm the leader. But. Sometimes you gotta follow the lead. Mm -hmm. But I think that you you said something that's so important that when a leader comes in and their team already is knows what needs to get done, they're already mm -hmm. doing it. Yep. And the leader feels left out because they feel like they don't have a job to do to be done. That's when you have a good leader. Yep, that's that's the key right there. When when the leader can come in, so I hit my pinnacle. Then is that what you're telling me? <laughs> you have hit your pinnacle, Dad. You can retire now. <laughs> You've inspired them and motivated them to take action with effective communication, and they know their stuff. You have the right people on the bus, at yeah. least for that moment. It can go south for at any time, moment. for that moment, because it can go. It can a tornado can come, and we're like, and then we have to come help out. Yep, absolutely, absolutely, Powerful. absolutely. I love the shuns. I like shuns are awesome. Yeah. When dad was like, we're just going to add another shun. Jay was like, oh, I'm going to shun all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> bad. bad. <laughs> it's not as bad as game night, but we won't bring that up. <laughs> Stop. No game night. <laughs> Oh my god. We need to do another game night. That was a lot, a lot of fun. Oh, no. <laughs> Kristen, a great leader can take any day off and it still goes well. Like that's that's when you know that you've that you're successful as a leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Granted, not every day is gonna be like that. Yeah. But the days that are like that, no like Take a moment oh, and relative. have some gratitude yeah. and pride in yourself yeah. Yeah. because you did that. You built your team to the point where they come in mm -hmm. and they're not sitting at the job site waiting for somebody to come and tell yeah. them what to do. Absolutely. They're taking the initiative. Yep. I've had moments like that, Sam, where I, I felt like, you know, we were kicking off a project, doing something and I had to go, you know, Thanksgiving and Brooke would, could attest to this. And it was like, you know, you have all these things and you're like, oh, I got to call them. Are they doing it right? And it's like literally at the end of the day, they had it. The training was there. The things were set up. And it's like, and at first, it's almost like a young leader. We have to learn that the art of delegation. Mm -hmm. We really have to learn that so hard. because we're like, we're like, we, we, we want to make sure it's done right. Oh, we're not there. They're going to be able to handle it. What if they need something? Just let them know I'm there versus they've got when they look at you and you have trust and they say, I've got this. Enjoy your vacation. And you and you got that bond built. You have to take it, and like you said, gratitude, relish in it. Say, you know what? I'm gonna take this moment. My team's got this. I'm out. And then go be human, right? Go be human for oh, a minute. Absolutely. And it's not it's, it's it's not only that, but when you get a chance, when 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 your guys are when 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 your when your team is working mm -hmm. without your instruction because you taught them good enough, you got to give them a little bit of gratitude. You got to oh, yeah. really, you know, an attaboy goes a long way. A pat on the back goes a long way. A good compliment, you know. A sandwich. Um, 
absolutely because it's you know what happened. <laughs> construction guys lunch <laughs> it's true right Man. a sandwich will help will be the difference in a negotiation or anything like you can have some having a bad day take them out to eat give them food and it's like a box of donuts makes people so happy it's, it's amazing that oh wow he really cares he really thought about us you know Yep. And don't bring yeah. some stale donuts that you had left over from dinner. You know, from- they got to be good. Don't get good, some fresh stuff. good stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, when I was the leader of uh, of my last apartment, when I was at uh, New York Home Healthcare, every holiday uh, for Christmas, I would bring in like a little mug. Uh, for Valentine's Day, I would go and I would get little hearts for of chocolate for for uh halloween everybody would dress up for christmas we would wear ugly sweaters like those are all these little things that you build into your team culture that makes people want to work with you that makes people want to cover your back that makes people want to be there and support you so that when stuff does hit the fan and it will Mm -hmm. They're there to help clean it up. Yep. They're not. Well, that's not my problem. That's yeah, not my job. They're like, they're there for you. Here, here's an interesting thing. So Nicole Brown just put up something and she's a project manager I work with. And one of her things to build teams, uh, boots on the ground, when it's hot outside, literally project manager, she goes out there and brings the whole team. We're talking 30, 40 people. She brings them Otter Pops. She'll get them drinks. If they need pens, if like the QC have special fine point pens, she knows what they need. And she goes out there and she literally pays for this herself. She'll go out there and bring them pens. She'll buy lunches. She'll, it's like, I've never seen anybody be able to really, she uses all like that real uh, empathy and just understanding her team to really help her in those times of crisis. When things go crazy, they've all got her back. Like they, uh, you'll see people come out of the woodwork to help Nicole out because of those little gestures of gratitude, right? She, people will say to her, and this is crazy. They'll say, nobody ever comes and tells us, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Like they say this, I get messages from people saying, Nicole just did all these awesome things. And I'm like, and you don't hear that every day. And that's powerful. So we have to take care of our people, people. High five, Nicole. Yes. And tacos. And tacos. Definitely tacos. Tacos will do I, um, you know, my, my late boss, uh, my, she ran a company for many, many years and when I joined the company, I was so excited to be able to have a female leader, right? A, a genuine, strong female leader who like ran the company. She was the owner of the company. Um, every single payday in the summer, she walked around, handed out checks and handed out ice cream every single payday. That's awesome. And it just, it just brings this sense Yeah, like nobody's being bought off, you know, but a little bit of appreciation. So far, just that an ice cream. What did it cost her? Maybe twenty dollars. And everybody in the company would bend over backwards for her. I I did the same thing at work. I I have uh, in my lunchbox. I usually keep, you know, the little kid packs of fruit snacks. And we were doing uh, we were doing uh, a, uh, a place, and we had the floor guys come in, and the floor guys were sanding, and I'm upstairs painting, and all my guys are around the place, and but the floor guys are there, and and uh, <clears throat> I, I it was lunchtime for me. I take lunch at 11:30 because I'm 7:30 to 3:30. That's my eight hours, and when I take lunch, I mean I take five minutes to choke down a sandwich, and I go back to work. Working lunch. So, I, I feel yep. a little guilty, you know, eating in front of people that are working. Mm-hmm. So what I do, and and you know, these 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 guys don't know me from a hole in the wall, but I'll turn around, I'll reach in my bag, and I'll pull out a, a, a pack of a uh, little pack of fruit snacks, and I'll say, "You want some fruit snacks?" And they'll be like, "Yeah, thanks." And you know, these are people that I don't know, but it doesn't cost me much just to be kind and and you know. We end up with people turning around saying, oh, are you guys looking for help? No, no, we're not looking for help. <laughs> <laughs> I want to work with you I guys. You guys have fruit snacks. <laughs> you got, I'm telling you, food and sandwiches, man. Sandwiches will go a long way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So 
we're winding down. I want to leave some uh, time for questions, but um, time. I also do want to touch. Yeah, I mean, we're at 40 minutes already. Yeah. This oh, is wow. Too quick. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. even know <laughs> We're in the zone. So I wanted right to bring up lessons from dad. I yeah. I love lessons from dad. Uh, so massive shout out. I don't know if he's still here, but Logan was here. Um, Logan and John Connolly decided that they're going to put out newsletters, right? And they were doing them. Uh, Logan will put out one one week and John will put out one the other week. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, another connection, Michael Stinnett had said, hey, that thing, that, that post that you wrote, I think it could be an article. And I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so I reached out to Logan and I was like, hey, you know, I see you guys doing these newsletters things. What do you think about me doing my own? And this was like way early in my LinkedIn journey. Like I barely had like 200 followers at this point. And I'm like, should I do this, this thing? And he's like, yeah, why not? Like put out the newsletter. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I, don't have, I don't have that many people. Um, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take these so stories and these lessons that I learned from my dad growing up. So good. And and show people how I've translated them into business. Because interpretation, right? Perspectives, like all of those things. <laughs> it It's all, it it all ties together. Right. Mm -hmm. So my first one was super easy, right? Be a good role model. Growing up, dad always, you got to be a good role model. I was the oldest of four children. And then dad got remarried, had another two. Uh, and I got a stepsister and I got a stepbrother. And like, I've got siblings all over. It's like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> but it was, I always wanted to be a good role model. And looking back, there, there's that, there's always that question, right? Is, is a leader born or is a leader made? So growing up, I've always had dad in my ear, be a good role model. Your, your siblings are looking up to you. Make sure that you don't do the bad thing. Make sure that you always, you know, try to look out for others that are behind you. Make sure you always are kind and, and caring and gentle and compassionate and all these things. So I grew up learning that. So for me, I was born to be a leader. No, I was bred to be a leader. Inspired. I was molded into a leader my entire life. Mm -hmm. How could I not turn into a leader? <laughs> Inspired. So good. That life is an obstacle course, though. That's my favorite. It's my absolute favorite. I love love is not a word. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Lesson. That's that was lesson number three, and it was a. Uh, um, what is it? Living. What is it? The three. The four words, with emotion. Um, living off uh, various emotions. emotions. Living off various emotions. I was like, because <laughs> it's true. Living yeah. off various emotions. Love. Like, what does it mean? It's, uh, it's every emotion you can possibly imagine. And at any moment, right? It can be fleeting. It can be caring. It can be compassionate. It's, it's everywhere. And that it's one got me. Ways. The one that really, yeah. the one that really snuck up on me though, Sam was, he's not more hairy. That... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, and I was that, like... was, uh, that was my silver tongue days. <laughs> and, and it is it's true it's like how is she he's not more how how are we gonna oh okay yeah when and you know what's really funny when i told dad that i was writing that one he's like how how are you gonna turn this into a leadership lesson and i'm like watch Perception. me <laughs> watch me and it's all just about having conviction in what you say right if you go out and you say the sky is green yeah. and if you say it with enough conviction people are gonna say oh crap is is the sky really green right now let me go check hold on I'll be right back like they know it's blue they know it's, <laughs> they know blue. it's blue you had certainty. we're gonna go check yeah 
if you start coming up with, you know, some cockamamie, you know, reasons why the sky is green, but you have to have a, what, what I would call a, an educated hypothesis <laughs> on some of the stupidest things you can think of and just kind of. Oh, like hair follicles being more spread out? <laughs> or being more condensed because they're shorter. Yeah. <laughs> What do you do when you find hair in your shaved ice? Uh, I would say stop. Blame it on, on the piragua cube. guy. Stop what? What was that? Stop, stop sitting on the cube. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, Adam had asked a question earlier about, you know, uh, advice for handling people that don't want to follow the plan or instructions or whatever. Mm. And one of the things that I like to do is I, I always try to, you know, when I talk with people, I try to, I try to be silly. I try to, you know, be fun. But when it, when it, when it comes down to somebody who doesn't want to follow the agenda, I'll usually go work right alongside them, right alongside them to show not only can I do it, but I'll race you. Ooh, healthy competition. And the competition just, it'll send Another them all over the edge. And before I know it, because I'm older, they're working harder and faster than I am because they want to prove to me that they're better than me, which is fine with me. Get the job done. I don't care. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I just, it's, it's just about, uh, you know, figuring out how to, how to motivate people, I guess, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Leading from the front, leading right next to them. Mm -hmm. Always. I wouldn't ask you to do something I wouldn't do. So absolutely. let's get in there and do it. And that's a key, a key distinction. To a lot of people in leadership. And I know these are like buzzwords or buzz sayings, you know, you know, lead from the front, but it's true. It's like, these things are there. So we remember as leaders, like we have these models that we can remember because you have to. If you're, if you're a leader and you're not stepping in and getting your hands dirty, you're not, you're, I'm not gonna say you're not a leader, you're, but you're not, you're not going to be, your, your team will not respect you. So you end up losing. Whoever you're respect a dictator you at that point. <laughs> yeah. Do this thing. It's like, yeah, show me. Right. Nope. Yeah. And, and it's cool. Cause that's, that's actually where innovation comes in because a lot of us that are in, you know, leadership positions and we're in working and mentoring and coaching other people. When we get in there, if we don't know something, we get to collaborate. And yep. so now we have there, we're all in there, like trying to figure it out. And it's like, well, maybe I don't know how to do this, but I'll jump in there with you. And then together, all of us come together and figure out that plan forward. And that's where actual collaboration, that's where innovation comes from. Yep. Absolutely. Right. It's all about the shuns. The shuns yeah. are everywhere. I'm telling you. <laughs> I thought shuns were a bad thing. When you shun I know. Bad, we're spinning it. Body. We're putting a spin on those, those shuns right now. But it's, it's funny because you, if you think about that, the moments where us leaders have to step in and grow outside of our box, right? Grow outside, take a step outside our comfort comfort zone. We leverage the best within ourselves, energizing the best within everybody, elevating the team. And we usually get a better result. And if we don't, yeah. we all learn together. And that's even more powerful because everybody's like, oh, you remember when we did that thing? Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. That wasn't cool. Bad, bad touch. Or, and, it helps to, and it helps to know by, by pulling, by working alongside of them or, or pulling somebody in and asking their opinion, you know, making, helping to make them feel a little more like they're contributing everything. It just, it, it, it really helps to make a bond because when you, when you mm -hmm. bond with people, it's easier for, to, to get, you know, them to move a little easier. You know, if you, if you, if you don't bond with somebody, you ask somebody to do it, it's going to go in one ear and out the other, and they're going to do whatever they want to do anyway. And when you bond with somebody, it's, it's so all along the lines of, hey, you know what? He's telling me this. Hey, you know what? When you climb that ladder, make sure that you keep both hands on that ladder, you know, on the way up. Because if you're, if you, if, if you're just too busy horsing around, you're not focusing, you're going to slip, you're going to fall, I'm not going to pick you up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and, and I do it with humor. But I try to get my point across, you know, because I, I really want, I, I really want people to know that I, I'm going to, I'll be there. You know, I'll, of course, I'm going to pick them up. Of course, I'm going to help them. I'll foot the ladder, do, do whatever it takes to, to, 
to, to let them know that they can do, you know, with mm-hmm. a, if they don't know how a little bit of guidance, but knowing your people, you know, and learning your people is, is important because if you mm-hmm. can learn about them, if you can't learn what they're capable of, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to put them to something. If, mm-hmm. if you're not sure if they're going to be able to perform or got to have absolutely got to have certainty, certainty. got to have some level of certainty and at the same time you got to allow have a little uncertain to let them grow because you know but it's picking the right time to grow right like i think we discussed this yesterday it was like if you got 6 months to do something right or it was like you got yeah 6 months to complete it and you want to give it to somebody to grow so you can teach them and train them and it's going to take you four months. Then you bring them up and say, "Let's time. Let's let's do the let's do some mentoring and coaching at this section." Yeah. But uh, you have to know them. You got to know your people. You got to know where they're at and and when to utilize the right tool. And make sure they're charged. Make sure your tools are charged. Right. You got to have the right energy. We talk about our body and being able to our mind. But the tools themselves. How many times, Dan, have you went to grab a power tool and somebody didn't put it back on the charger? Oh my God, it happens all, on on a regular basis. Because I. Then- <laughs> The guys on the lower ladder are the usually the, are the ones who are responsible for cleanup and charging yep. batteries and making sure that the tools are organized, you know? Yep. And that's all about being efficient because when you go back to grab that tool, if none of your stuff's charged and you have to do it by hand to keep moving, you just killed productivity, yep. right? And you did. And if they don't put stuff back in there, and this is another one, put your tools in the right location back where they go you because we get it. where you got them from. Yeah, there ain't nothing worse than reaching for a tool and it's gone. No. Yeah, that's horrible. It is. Horrible. It, it, oh, here's a good question from Kristen. Who is the best boss that you ever had and why? Who, my boss? Me? Yeah, who's the, be- yeah. Who is the best boss? I'm, I'm going to say, be, before I moved here to Virginia, the guy that I worked for um, over there in New York, his name was Tom Marcy. And when I first went to work with him, it was funny because he was like, you know, do siding. I said, yeah. All right. Meet me at this address. And I go over there and uh, he was like, all right, you know, how to do J channel and fan fold. And all. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And for years, I worked for a company that it was just get it done, get it done, get it done. I don't care what it looks like. Just get it done. So I had that mentality. I went in and I went all gun ho. And I started nailing up J channel and everything and, and fan fold and about, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so um, comes walking around the corner and he looks at the work and he goes, I thought you were a siding mechanic. Bah, bah, bah. He grabs his hammer out of his pouch. He claws it on. He ripped the J channel off. And he's like, I, every, all of my business is word of mouth. I need it done right. If you can't do it right, I'll find somebody else to do it. And I was like, Whoa, Hey, hold on a second there, buddy. You know, just, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to work for this guy. But I needed the job, so I stuck with it. I, he said, now, can you do it better than that? I said, yeah, I'll do it. How, show me what you want done. He showed me what he wanted done. I went in there. Not only did I do it, but I did it better than his. You know? And he just he, he just elevated me. He always, anytime he introduced me to somebody, he to a new customer, he was like, this is Dan. He's my number one guy. He's he's better than me in a lot of things. And that said a lot because, you know, Tom Tom was in business before I went to him. He was in business for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I worked for him af- after that day of getting my butt chewed out. I worked for him for an additional 10 years, you know, and he really, really just let me shine. He was like, you know, Danny, I need this trimmed out and I'm not sure what best what's the best way and we would collaborate we would talk and, and yep. he would be like, you know what let's do this can you make that happen i can absolutely make that happen all right go ahead i think he was the best because he not only did he motivate me but he just let me shine you know he he knew that i enjoyed solving problems i'm the guy mm-hmm. to come to when when something goes wrong because if I don't know an answer, I will find an answer. Boom, bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lesson from dad. And, it, and like, Felix, so like Felix just said, he made you feel important. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. 
which is powerful as leaders. We have to let people know that they're important, right? That they're there for a reason and we respect and appreciate them. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we're all working, you know, it's, it's not, it's like the labor of love, right? We're in there trying to get it done, but you know, without appreciation, then what is there? We're just in there. We're literally just a tool. We're not the people. Absolutely. Nadine, dad, this is a, this is my, my Brexican. Coffee. Um, <laughs> Uh, Nadine says, how can we learn about our people if they're not super forward, they're shy, or they're just not trusting of management? Uh, trying to find something to associate with, you know, get on, get, find something that they're interested in besides work. You know, like Aaron, I know Aaron is crazy about football, he's crazy about politics. I don't watch football. I don't know jack about politics, but because I, I wanted to engage with him, I started listening to the shows that he listens to. I started, you know, doing things like, like that he likes to do and talking about things that he likes because, you know, it's easier to associate. And I guess what it did also was it gave me the opportunity to talk about things that I like. And I don't know whether it forced him into it or or just made him or, or guilted him into you know wanting to engage with me you know so when he used to be super quiet on the job he was always just had his headphones on now we just talk and we talk on a personal level i think that the people that you work with that you see on a daily basis are your pretty much your best friends besides your spouse and you know your regular best friends but the people that you work with they're, they're your best friends because you talk personal business with them, you know, that they're your bitch buddies, excuse my language, you know, mm -hmm. um, God forbid something happens, they're the people that are right there that's going to either back you up. If I fall off a ladder, I know Aaron's going, oh, Dan just fell off the ladder. Oh, he's, he's not going to say, uh, well, if he gets up, I'll, I'll go see if he's okay, you know. If I fall, if I if I even make the weirdest noise, Aaron is always going, "Hey, you okay? You all right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, we're fine. I'm, I'm good to go." You know, it's it's uh, if you get personal with people and 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 you're on a job site, they know that they can rely on you. You know, you can rely on them. They become your best friends at the job site. And once you get that knit going, you know, it's that what do they they call it a niche? I guess no. Mm -hmm. A click, a click on a job site, they're mm. important, but you cannot let that click get to the point where somebody who's not performing can still, you know, push people around and and stick around and not work and, and do things just because they got into the click. The click is mm. for work. Work is for work, you know? So when you click at work, that means you can get along with your people that you work with, but that doesn't mean that you're immune to getting in trouble or getting getting the boot. I want. I want to love it. That is a, one of the most important messages I've ever heard in team building. You actually when if you appreciated, stepped outside to learn something about your teammate, even though it didn't matter to you, it's because you wanted to bond with them. So you went and found out what was important learned about it so you could communicate effectively giving you leverage so you could then have a build a great relationship with them mm -hmm. to open them up that's powerful crank up the leadership right there that's it boom that's it boom. that's how you do it elevate more nuggets that more nuggets that's lovely dad you've been dropping gold nuggets this whole show it's like a guy. gold mine up in here tonight <laughs> You know, I'm not a very educated person. I, I dropped out of high school. Believe it or not, even though I dropped out of high school, I think I still got one quarter credit in college. And I don't even know what it was for because we did this upward bound program when when uh, when I was uh, in high school. But, you know, I, I dropped out of high school. I'm not a super educated person. I don't consider myself to be very smart. I don't, I don't read very well. My math is horrible. Spelling is horrible. But I do consider myself to be fairly intelligent. Smart and intelligent are two different things. You know? University of life. <laughs> 
it's uh, you know to me for me intelligence comes from being able to learn from your mistakes being able to adapt and overcome and say hey you know um i've been trying this you know what, what do they say what's the expression the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same result uh, and expecting a, a good result you know if you can't you know like i told sammy if if you can't uh if you come up against an obstacle there's got to be a way over under around through whatever the case may be you you have to find it and you're and if you give up easily then don't bother don't, you know Me, people want to follow you, people who don't want to give up you got to make a way if you can't find a way, you got to make a way, right? Make that way. Make yep. it happen. Yeah. Yep. This is awesome. I'm so freaking proud of you, Dad. We look, I, look, you know, I'm proud of you guys. I mean, this is freaking awesome. I, I like this show. And I, I like see where she gets guys. the storytelling. Um, yeah. I see where you totally get your natural yeah. storytelling. Oh, my God. <laughs> totally. Totally from Dad. <laughs> We are at an hour. We're at actually just a few minutes over. Yeah. And it's, um, awesome. it's been a pleasure. God, thank you all. Yeah. Thank you seriously. All. Dad, thank you so much for joining us. Like we we've had a blast here tonight with you. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed talking with you guys and uh, being able to associate because this, you know, it, it, this will help me too. You know, I I don't do the the white collar. Aaron is actually the guy. The guy that works under me is the son and is is my boss's son-in-law. He's going to inherit the business, okay? Because he's this this guy's a walking calculator, and it drives me nuts. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh my god! And and I'm not talking. I mean, you can give him decimals, and he'll break it down for you without a calculator. It, it it's absolutely insane. But you know, I, I've been training him for the last five years, and, and he's really come out of his shell. And I I know that eventually someday I'm going to get old, and I'm going to have to pass it on. You know, I'm not going to be able to work as much as I would like to. Because I don't want to retire. I'm not. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to. Retire. I think when people retire is when they end up in grave. So, got to always stay moving. Life is about movement. No matter what, even if we retire physically from doing things, we can mentally stay agile and keep doing what we love. Right. Body's in motion. Mm -hmm. Stay in motion. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I caught another one here. <laughs> Oh, good. That was, All right, guys. That was we're going to. Yeah. Good ender. I think. That was, that was like, that's it. Dad's just going to be here with us all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think Steve is going to want. I don't think he's going to want to give up his room so many times. So, so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for giving up your room so Dad could record, CJ. I'll be in here, CJ. You know, he bugged out earlier. I think he came and get because they give him his medication. He's getting ready to go to bed soon. He might be watching well, in the other room though. He was he was making comments earlier when we first started, but he might have walked. Yeah, he was. Him. He was like best show ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go tell all my friends about it. <laughs> my dad's on YouTube. It's it's like uh, that commercial that they have where it's all the young kids and they're like you know they have. Uh, boards in there or, or uh, folders in their hands and and they're like telling people how to you know work it looks like a white collar setting but it's all like little kids with suits and ties and glasses it's phenomenal well my boiler just kicked on yeah. jay you want to take us out well um so quick takeaway from all this is that you have strategy, you have tactics, and you have resourcefulness that you have at any time that we have to use, but it really comes from power tools. And so we really have to know the state, who we are as a person. And then once we elevate that state and how we can interact and lead our teams, we can then impose strategy. We can impose our tactics to get people to do the work, right? We're, 
And then after that, we can then be, have to be resourceful with all the tools we have around here. So that's, that's what I really took from this is that there's a lot of power in your tools physically, mentally, everywhere around you. And you just need to have the right tool for the right job. And I also learned a lot about Sam by watching her dad. And it's been incredibly powerful. And I want to thank everybody. So awesome, Jay. Fantastic. So uh, that's it. Dad, stick around for some after stuff. But uh, we're out. We'll see you guys next month. Drag it up. Walk on, Jay. Walk on, Dad. Bye, everybody.